Hey guys, we're gonna do the topic nine review homework, which is always the homework right before the test next class. So make sure you do this before you come to the test, either Friday or Monday, depending on which period you have me. All right, so the first question, question number one, states how can geometric relationships be proven by applying algebraic properties to geometric figures represented in our coordinate plane? Okay, so I think based on our foldables, we have some really good examples of that. We can, um, how can we do this? Okay. We can use algebra uh, and our formulas, right, to um, identify shapes, right? and draw circles. So how have we been doing that? Well, if we think about our foldables, um, what do I mean by algebra and formulas? Uh, specifically, I guess I mean that um, here I'm using these formulas, the distance, midpoint, and slope formulas from my green foldable to identify the shapes on the pink foldable, right? And to graph a circle, I'm using these same formulas to find my radius, right? Um, in order to graph my circles or find where the center and the radius of my circle is, okay? So that's what I mean by how am I using algebra in order to identify shapes and draw circles. Okay, now I think most of you know this. If you have your workbook, you see that we did topics 9-1, 9-2 and 9-3. We did not do 9-4 and 9-5. So a couple of these questions I'm going to cross out. So this word you wouldn't know, this word, this word. Um, so I'm probably only looking for three here that makes sense. Okay. A, yeah, this word ellipse, that was in the section that was eliminated. Focus at high. Hyperbola, that was in this section, uh, 9.4 and 9.5. Um, okay, so this, the highest point of a graph, we didn't talk about that. So, oh, wow. Okay, so the only one we can really answer here is three. A blank is a set of points equidistant from another point. That's our definition of a circle. Because let's think about this. A circle is a set of points that are equidistant from another point. So that's a distance of maybe two units. And that's a distance of two units. All those are distances of two units. So a circle is a set of points that are equidistant or the same from that point. Cool. All right. Next, in class, we talked about this example and we did number 10. So let's work through number seven, eight, and nine. It says, determine whether each figure is given the figure. So I'm gonna have to graph this. Um, so hopefully you have an extra piece of graph paper. Or you can get an electronic piece of graph paper uh, and I'll show you how to do that. So I kind of look around the internet and look for Google graph paper. And then I just take a picture of it and then put it in my file. So this was a picture of when I Googled the word graph paper. All right, so I'm just gonna clip it to just fit graph paper. Okay, so here's my piece of graph paper. So question number seven says, F is, I'm gonna actually copy that over on my other page so I don't have to go back and forth and back and forth. Okay, so since seven, eight, and nine, I'm gonna use graph paper. I kind of glued that here. So, okay, number seven says if f was negative two, so it looks in the x, I'm not gonna, x and y, I don't have to move very far. Um, and my height, I'm only going up to four. Okay, so I don't have to go up too high either. So negative two, positive four, is F, zero, zero is G, 
our origin, and 3, 1 is h. Okay, so here's our shape, and we are being asked, I guess I am going to have to flip back, we're being asked what kind of a triangle, oh, is, it's saying, is this a right triangle? So it looks like it might be close. I'm not sure. So using our green foldable, we can find out whether something is perpendicular because if it's perpendicular, then the slopes are opposite reciprocals. Okay, so let's try that out. The slope of FG, so if I take my magic, if I go from F to G, I fall for, I run to. So the slope, the slope of FG, fall for, run to. Okay, now I'm going to compare that to the slope of GH. So the slope of GH, that's going uphill. So I'm going rise one, run three. Rise one, run three. So now I'm going to say this is not a right triangle because G is not a right angle. All right. So number eight, is ABC an equilateral triangle? Okay, so let's graph that. Seven, two, so it looks like I'm going all the way over to seven in the X and all the way up to four, so, okay. So seven, two, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, two is A, three, negative one is B, three, positive four is C. Hmm. So is this an equilateral triangle? Well, an equilateral triangle would have all equal sides. So if it is an equilateral triangle, then all sides are going to be congruent. So I'm going to have to use my invisible right triangle, right? Here's a right triangle. Here's a right triangle. And this one I won't need to. I can just, what I say, I call that bunny hopping. Yeah, so this is a, an invisible right triangle that's two by four. So AC should be equal to the square root of two squared plus four squared and take the square root. All right, AB is an equilateral triangle that's a three and a four. So that, uh, that's not looking good. So the hypotenuse AB is part of the equilateral triangle that's three and four. So that's, that's not good. So I'm already done at this point. What is that? 25? Yeah, okay, so that's five. And this is five, one, two, three, four, five, five. So BC is five, AB is five, but AC is not five. So I'm gonna have to say, no, this is not an equilateral triangle. It's an isosceles triangle because two sides are congruent, not three. All right, last one like this, question number nine. Our coordinates are negative four, four, so I need to go back. Looks like a total of, look at all like negative x values, and down to four, up to four. So yeah, I'm gonna need a little bit more graph paper here. Okay, so again, it says negative 4, 4. Negative 4, negative 4. 
negative 7, so negative 4, 5, 6, 7. Negative 4, positive 4, negative 1, 0. Mm. Is this a rhombus? Oh, that's kind of cool. That's, it does kind of look like a rhombus, doesn't it? So if all sides are congruent, then this is going to be a rhombus. So let's verify if that is the case. We have to see, is KL equal to LM equal to JM equal to KJ? And we can do that with these invisible right triangles. Mm, and they all do look the same. So I'm actually feeling pretty good about this. This is a three by four right triangle, three by four. And this is a three by four right triangle. This is a three by four right triangle. And this one is two. So the distance, KL, is equal to 3 squared plus 4 squared. And 9 plus 16 is the square root of 25. So that's 5. That means, since that's 25, the rest of these will be 25 as well. KJ has to be 25. JM, or excuse me, the square root of 25, which would be 5. And LM would be 5. So we have confirmed... Uh, the rest were no, but this one is yes. This is a rhombus because all sides are five. Nice work. All right, so looking back, we have one more question here on the front. It says, make sense and persevere. A parallelogram, W, X, Y, and Z, has coordinates um, all different coordinates. Okay, so what that tells me is it's kind of like how this uh, rectangle is. It must be a parallelogram that's not completely, like, maybe it's something like this. See how that's a parallelogram? And it actually has all different, like A and B, you know, all different numbers. None of the numbers repeated. What equation can you use to determine whether it's a rhombus? Ooh, that's interesting. So we just did the rhombus, didn't we? So the equations we're going to have to use, if I can't graph it, I am going to have to use algebra. So I'm going to have to use, just like they did here in the example, I'm going to have to use the distance formula. So if this is a parallelogram, W, X, Y, and Z. All right. And these are the coordinates they've given us for each one. Then we can find the distance of W, X. It's the square root of the difference in the X values. So I can subtract those two values. Oh, wait, let's see. Subtract the two values, square it, and subtract the two y values, square it, and take the square root. That would have to then also equal, right? If this is a rhombus, then we have to say wx has to equal xy, has to equal yz, has to equal wz. All of them have to be equal. So we could set these all equal to each other. All right, so this other one, we did WX. Now let's do uh, XY. So XY, I would subtract C and F and D and G, which would have to equal ZY. So ZY, I would subtract F and H, and G and I. And last, uh, that would have to also equal WZ. So that would be this W first and last. So I would subtract A and H and B and I. Cool. Okay. 
Interesting question, that last 11, question number 11, pretty interesting. So let's look at the back here. All right, so given the coordinates, give the coordinates of a missing vertex. So we're going to have to graph this, I think, in order to get our answer. And let's see how they did it. So it looks like they used our, um, they used this, distance formula to solve that all diagonals are congruent. They're really interesting. So if ABC is a parallelogram, and we get to start at the 0, 0, that's nice. And let's say B is some answer where you went over P and up Q. All right, I went over P, up Q, and D is T0. So D is T0, so that's this whole width T. Then we know the last coordinate here, so we have A, B, C, D. The missing coordinate, right, we have A, B, and D. The missing coordinate C has to be here at height of Q, right? We did go up Q to get there, and we went over T plus this P. So our coordinate would be Q, and we went over T plus that P. All right, to make a kite, if I start out at zero, zero, okay, so let's make a little sketch. To make a kite, if you start out at zero, zero, that's J. K is at A, B, so we went over A and we went up B. That's point K. L, we went, uh, we didn't go over anything, but we went up C. Okay, so here, here's our parallelogram. And if this is, or it looks like a parallelogram, right? So, but if this is a kite, then I need these two distances to equal each other. And these two distances to equal each other. Does that make sense? Now, the other thing that could have happened is what if C would have been further up? So let's say if I retrace my steps, what if C was actually a number bigger than B? I don't know really if it's less or bigger, but let's imagine it was bigger. So we'll um, extend this a little further. What if C, uh, I go up to C, this is my coordinate. Ah, that's kind of cool, right? What if this is my kite? I think that's, if it's if C is actually greater than B, then I think we could pretty easily find the other coordinate of our kite. You see how this one, because we know that kites are have vertical reflection. Okay, so our coordinate, J, K, and L. The last coordinate, M, would be, uh, if I went over A this way, I'd have to go back A that way. So back A, and I'd have to go up, however I went up here to get to K. So if I went up B, then I also wanna go up B to get to here. So my missing coordinate is C. My missing coordinate here is M. Okay. Now my rhombus, so that's just all sides are equal. So let's play with that one a little bit. All right, if I have a rhombus that is at zero, zero, that's W, that one's not missing. Y is zero H, so zero H, and that's point Y. Um, So this is my rhombus. And then JK is some other amount. So if JK is some other amount, 
For instance, we have to know that this distance has to equal that distance. So we know that however far over j is and however far up k is, we have to know that this distance is an invisible right triangle. So we have to know that wz has to be the square root of k squared plus j squared, which has to equal the distance h. Okay? So how are we going to figure out the missing coordinate? It looks like I'm missing coordinate x. So I still need one more coordinate, and it looks like I have three of my coordinates, w, y, z. So I need this coordinate x, and it's, and it's pretty obvious it's somewhere there. So how can I figure out where to put that? Um, I think uh, we noticed that, that last time, right? We're going to have the same invisible right triangle here, have to. This is going to have to be J and K, and this one's going to have to be J and K. So if we figure out this coordinate, we notice that to get here, I had to go over K, and I had to go up H plus J. So that's my missing coordinate. My missing coordinate X is I went over K, and I went up H plus J. Cool. So that's my missing coordinate. X is missing, and that will put me right there on that spot. 15. If you're given the coordinates of a quadrilateral, how can you prove the quadrilateral is an isosceles trapezoid? So in our notes today, we wrote that down, right? So kind of just using our notes here. All right, for number 15, so you can write that on another piece of paper somewhere here on your sheet, number 15. Um, how do we prove it? Well, if, let's see what our notes said. So here's some notes for question. If um, one set of opposite sides are parallel and other opposite sides are congruent, then it's an isosceles trapezoid. So how can we prove that? Well, we said in our notes, right, to prove things are parallel, we'd have to show same slope. And to prove that the opposite sides are congruent, we'd have to show um, same distance, whether with our invisible right triangle or with my distance formula. Okay, 16. This diagram shows a fenced-in garden. So let's play with our magic pen here. We've got 0, 0, C, D. So that means I went over C, a certain distance C, and I went up a certain distance D because that's this coordinate. All right, and then this says I went over A. So that's this whole distance has to be A because that's what that coordinate is. Okay, so looking at this diagram, it shows our fenced garden where Px is equal to Py. So they're trying to say this is a isosceles, meaning this side is equal to that side. Okay? The gardener's dividing it with a fence from P to the midpoint. The midpoint of xy. So somewhere there. Will the new fence be perpendicular? Use coordinate geometry to explain. So the answer here would be yes. Seems pretty obvious um, that an isosceles triangle 
If I dropped an altitude, it would be the perpendicular bisector. We have seen that in other classes. But using coordinate geometry, let's explain. So that coordinate of our midpoint, we're interviewing it, our possible midpoint would be C0, okay? We also know that that distance, since it's um, equal on both sides, since it's isosceles, that the distance A is equal to 2 times C, or you could also say the distance C is equal to half of A, right? So if I took my coordinate geometry and I used my midpoint formula, which, which we did get in class, right, my midpoint formula, I could take the two coordinates and it will show me the midpoint of a side. And so that's actually what they're asking me to do here. All right, so going back to my problem after I referenced my notes, um, if one of the coordinates, 0, 0, and we'll call that x, right? And the other coordinate, y, is a0, then the midpoint would be to add the two x values, divide by 2, and add the two y values. So I get my midpoint is a over 2, comma, 0. And notice, even though this says C, it really is A over 2, right? A over 2. Um, so that's our same coordinate there. Nice. All right. Now, especially for my brand new students, you're really focusing on these because you're going to be responsible for these types of questions on the test. Uh, but most of them will be multiple choice. Okay, so let's take a look. Here's our general formula, right? And they worked out a problem. We probably would have used this invisible right triangle, and we saw it's a one by two, right? So we would have said our radius is equal to one squared plus two squared. Notice they got the same thing for the radius. So if the radius is the square root of five, then the radius squared is five. So using that example, let's go ahead and work the circle practice questions. It says, write the equation for these. Okay, so this one's like the first one we did, x squared plus y squared is radius squared. So that would be 9 squared or 9 times 1, 81. Here we've got x plus 2 squared, y minus 3 squared, 5 times 5, 25. Mm, interesting. Okay, so here we have x plus 5 squared, y plus 8 squared, and negative or square root of 13 times the square root of 13 is just plain old 13. Cool. Now for 20 and 21, it says determine whether a given point lies on that circle. So this was like our example. Um, we did an example like this, not in our foldable, but um, in the previous class. So our step one is to make our equation, right? And then step two, plug it in. And if we plug it in, if we plug in those values for x and y, and they the left doesn't equal the white, right, we know it's not on that circle because we're being asked if it's on that circle. So looking at our center and radius, we get x plus 5 and y minus 2. And if I squared this, let's see what we get. So that would be 4 times the square root of 4 or 4 times 2, which is 8. Okay, 8. So now we're going to plug this in. So if I took the value negative 3 and plug it in for x, take the value 0 and plug it in for y. What do I get? Okay, so on number 20, it looks like I would get negative 3 plus 5 squared and 2 minus 2 squared. Oh, I didn't plug in the right value. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to plug in 0. And I have to ask if this equals 8. So this would be does 4 plus 4 equal 8? I think it does. 
So 20, I'm going to say yes. Let's take a look at 21. It says, if my center and radius is this, so that would be x minus 4 squared, y minus 4 squared equals this squared. So 6 times another squared is 36. So I get 36 times the square root of 4, which is 36 times 2, which is 72. OK. So if this is my equation, if I plugged in 11 where I see the x and negative 1 where I see the y and the left equals the right, we can say yes. So let's try that out. So 11 minus 4, negative 1 minus 4, is that equal to 72? So what's that? 7 squared. Seventy-four. Nope, 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 nope. Seventy-four is not equal to seventy. Close, but no cigar. So I'm going to say no. Why? Because when I plug it in, I don't get um, the left of my equation equal to the right side of my equation. Last two. Suppose that A and B have these two coordinates and CD has these two coordinates. Are the diameters of circle T... What is the equation of circle T? Okay, I'm definitely, definitely going to graph this. All right, there's no way around it. I, I don't think I can do this problem without, without graph paper. Okay, so let's, let's go to my other sheet. Let's see if I have, nope, don't have any more graph paper space left. All right, and let's take a look at the, the way they asked that question again. It says, suppose AB is 115. One, one, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, fifteen. Okay, so that's one, fifteen, thirteen, one, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, one more. So thirteen, negative one. That's B. And this, they're telling us that this is the diameter of a circle. So we, we notice in class that we're like, oh, that's maybe where I need my midpoint, right? So I'm looking at the coordinate 2, 4, 6, um, 7, maybe something like 7, and 2, 4, 6, 7. Maybe the coordinate 7, 7 would be my center. Right? That's kind of my guess from graphing it. Well, using my midpoint formula, I can add the two x values, right? 1, 1 plus 13 divided by 2, then add the two y values. 15 minus 1. So we get 14 halves, which is 7. Aha! 15 minus 1 is 14, divided by 2 is 7. Okay, so my picture was right. I did it algebraically and geometrically. Now, it said, what would be the equation of this? I don't really need to do C and D because I pretty much know this is my radius. So to make um, an equation, I need the center point, right? And I have my center point. And then I need my radius. So I just need to know the distance between here and there. And I can kind of count my boxes with my invisible right triangle. So it looks like this would be 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Mmm, cool. So our radius would be equal to six squared plus eight squared, which is the square root of 100 or 10. So our radius here is 10. So this must be 10. And so now we can, uh, you don't have to draw a circle, but we can maybe see a circle here. We can imagine a circle would be here, and that's be pretty close to where the center would be, right? Um, and I can make my equation. So it's my center, right? My center's at seven, x minus seven squared, and y minus seven squared has to equal to 10 squared or 100 because my radius is 10. Last one, 23. Is it possible to write an equation of a circle given only two points on a circle? Absolutely. No, <laughs> yes, I just did that. So number 23, if you wanna write that back on here, if you've got some room, it's like, yes. We only used points A and B on number 22 to write the equation of that circle. So um, it is helpful if it's if the two points are ends of the diameter, ends of a diameter. Nice work, guys. Best of luck studying for the test. Take care.